All right. Uh, Jerry's not probably not going to be on. He was going to talk about Club Runner today, but he's on his way to Arkansas. So Chris is stepping into that gap and he's going to talk just kind of a high level on the Rotary Foundation. Actually, let me quiz the group here. What do you want to talk about in terms of the Rotary Foundation? I'll, I'll suggest one topic because we discovered it? It another Rotary Club that I belong to. The distinction between making contributions to the foundation um, in such a way that the club gets credit for those contributions or in such a way that we do. So the particular club was collecting money from the members and making contributions on behalf of the club and it got the credit for those contributions. But um, the district governor at the time pointed out that by doing it that way, the individual members didn't get foundation credit, which comes towards uh, things like Paul Harris Fellow Awards. So if that's of interest to the group, that might be a topic to discuss. Yeah, and that actually creates another issue as well, because if the individual is claiming personal tax deductions, their personal tax deductions aren't going to match up with the IRS in terms of what Rotary International is reporting. Uh, right, unless our club has a foundation, unless we're donating to a registered foundation in the U.S., right. that then would allow you to take the deduction, but otherwise you're right, there's a club that doesn't get a deduction. Yep, that's right. So what we've done in our club is we've put a very hard press on um, getting our members to give their gift to the foundation through Rotary Direct and uh, ask all members to sign up for that. In fact, it's part of our orientation process that we put them through. So we've got, uh, my club is running about 35% of the members in Rotary Direct. Do you remember? Uh, what's that? I heard somebody say something, I couldn't hear what it was. It was probably just over. Okay. So, um, so we've run a lot of people, uh, it, it's just part of our standard operating procedure to have people sign up for Rotary Direct at $10 a month, um, which gets them to $120 a year instead of the $100 per year, which puts us a little bit over and helps our dollar per capita from a foundation giving perspective. So great question, Paul. Thanks. Netflix is not right now. So... What, what other foundation questions are out there? What, what's anybody are doing for support of World Polio Day coming up on October 24th? Chris, I'd like to go back to uh, your uh, every Rotarian every year uh, sustaining member. Yep. Getting my members in, in my club and in the district to support foundation is sometimes like pulling teeth. Uh, the only success I had was during the 100th anniversary, I got everybody to contribute $26.50. Uh, is your club attaining 100% EREY and sustaining? Yeah, and we run, our average per capita runs just over $200 a year in our club. Um, we, we've just made it a really important piece of uh, membership. You know, we, we are regularly educating our members on mem on foundation. Uh, we're constantly doing foundation updates. We're doing global grants. Um, and, and I think doing global grants helps people understand much more about the Rotary Foundation because they're seeing money that's actually going to work. Uh, we have clubs in our zone, not in our district and not my club personally, but we have clubs in our zone that are doing grants where they're bringing money in from other countries to their part of the world. John, actually very close to you in the northern part of West Virginia. Uh, that district up there, 7530, is doing a number of, um, they coin them here as reverse global grants, but you know, it's really bringing the money here so that the local Rotarians can see the work that the foundation can do. Yeah, th that uh, district governor was on our trip to India last January. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, uh, a lot of people don't know that the United States is a foreign country to the rest of the world. Yes, indeed it, it qualifies is. For, for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, you know, I'm the DRFC here and, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just a challenge sometimes. It, it's a, it's a challenge because it's a cultural issue and uh, you know, what a lot of, um, what I've seen in my, um, uh, position as the Rotary Coordinator 
and having getting around to 15 different districts in the zone. Um, I've seen districts where the governor and the uh, foundation chair beat up the clubs over foundation and there's not a whole lot of inspiration and I've seen others where there's a lot of inspiration behind the work that the Rotary Foundation does. And I think it's the inspiration component that drives people to want to give to the Rotary Foundation. And then they do also do a lot of recognition um, in terms of, uh, you know, the people that are making the gifts and the work that the gifts are doing. So it, it's a, an awareness component, an education component, and an inspiration component. Now, now let me ask you this. I don't know the answer, uh, and I'm not sure who does. Uh, I, of course, can get by name donation status for everybody in the district. Um, how much leeway do I have in using that information in, in contacting people and saying, hey, you know, Chris, you're only $156 away from your next Paul Harris recognition? Well, I, I certainly as the DRFC, you have um, the capability and the right to be contacted people for that purpose unless they ask you not to. Um, and I would take advantage of that and tell people, ask you not to. Um, but I would also add into that a training component, which is having people check their personal profile at rotary.org and then click on their uh, donation history so that they can learn how to do that themselves. It, it, it's always interesting to me how many of our Rotarians do not have an account set up at rotary.org. And then the, the wealth of information that is available to our Rotarians um, from my Rotary, Rotary Club Central, and from their profile page. So uh, I always encourage folks to make sure that they have set up their account and then that they're checking their donation history page on a regular basis. Ron, you're, you're in the same district I am. What are some of the things that you've observed from uh, some of the leadership you've seen? Your club is a good club in giving to the foundation. We have done pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Rotary Direct. Uh, one of the presentations I'll be doing to my club next month is on the uh, on Rotary Direct, and uh, we presently have about 75 members. Only four are are signed up for Rotary Direct, and it's so simple, so easy, and so positive for for any and everything you do. You keep up with all the records. Rotary RI sends you the, your the information, your secretary and treasurer has less work to have to do, and it works really great. Uh, um, you know, some some years ago, we got a bunch of motorcycle guys together and uh, and did a ride uh, highlighting polio. And Chris, you mentioned what to do in October, uh, that ride to highlight polio. And then, and then a number of us would get members of our club to sponsor us per, for, per mile that we rode. Uh, and, you know, some of us would go a thousand miles and those types of things and folks would donate a penny or 10 cents or five cents. And it, it turned out, at least in my club, to be a very successful way to, I think you, you Chris, was, was on that ride with us. Yep, I did that ride. Um, I don't know if you're talking about the same ride, but I did that ride for the 2011 New Orleans Convention and uh, mm -hmm. did a similar project and we I raised $3,500 from family and friends for that. It's just easy to let the, the club members and the people in your community to sponsor you and then let that money go back to the foundation. It's a, that's a fun thing to include our hobby and our enjoyment plus help the foundation at the same time. Yeah, so, so let me put my 501c3 hat on for a second because I work for a 501c3. And one of the things that um, we train our staff on is the fact that you need to talk in terms of an individual um, story, you know, a, a true impact story that people, when you're talking to them, can um, can align themselves with a story about an individual much more than they can about the fact that we're going to save two and a half million children from being crippled from polio. But if you can tell an impact story, I'll, I'll tell you one real quick. When I was in India in 2014, um, and we had done our NID, National Immunization Day. We were on a little bit of sightseeing down by the Red Fort. And outside of the Red Fort, there was a young man sitting on the curb with his legs crossed. And clearly he was polio stricken, could not walk. And we went over and had a discussion with him and talked to him about the fact that they were still doing, in Delhi, they were still doing uh, polio surgeries, that we could get them to 
um, to Delhi to have that surgery taken care of at no cost to him, be covered by Rotary. And he did not want to go through this process. He absolutely turned us away and said, no, 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 no. Now, of course, he doesn't speak English. He's speaking Hindu. And we had a translator with us. And so we were a little perplexed and didn't quite understand why. And so we dug into it a little bit and had a little bit deeper of a conversation. And we learned that if he had um, his legs corrected so that he could walk, he had absolutely no other skills. So therefore he had no way to make any money. So if we had corrected his polio issue, he would then be without any kind of an income stream. But we also fixed that by telling them that the Rotary Clubs in Delhi also did vocational training and they could teach him a craft and give him a skill so that when he was all done with the surgery and he went through that training, he would be able to support himself. Now, this was about a 20 to a 25 minute conversation. By the time we were done with that conversation, he was more than thrilled. And every time I've told that story, people have come back and said, I now understand the work that the Rotary Foundation does. Here's $25 for Polio Plus, okay? Or $100 or whatever the number happens to be. Um, but if you really tell a personal impact story or a one-to-one -one impact story, you're more likely to get a donation. Ron, when you do your training with your club next month, I would recommend that you have at least two or three laptop computers in the room so that when you talk about Rotary Direct, you can bring people right over to the computers. You and Ken Dresser and a few other folks can actually handhold and walk people through the process of getting them signed up on Rotary Direct. That's how we got so many people in my club signed up. Because every time we would say to them, go back home and sign yourself up for Rotary Direct, they'd leave the club and life got in the way and they just never got it done. So you've got to seize that moment while you have it and get people on Rotary Direct. I'll tell you what, it is, it's painless to me. It's a, it's a line item on my budget. It comes off my credit card every single month. I get the benefit of it because it goes towards my points program. Um, Rotary gets the benefit of it because it's going to support. I, I actually make two different donations a month. I support polio. I actually do three polio peace and the um, share fund. So, but it's really simple. I mean, it just comes off my credit card every month. So I don't even think about it anymore. And I've told my treasurer, don't put it on my invoice because I'm not paying you that way. I'm paying through the Rotary foundation directly. I, and you can set that time frame uh, up any way you want monthly, quarterly, annual. Yeah, monthly, quarterly, and annual are the three options to get that done. And if any of you aren't doing that, I recommend you go there and sign up for it. Just go to rotary.org slash donate and mm -hmm. set up your own account to have it come off your credit card. See how simple it is, because it really is simple. And once you've done it, then you can teach others how to do it. Sorry, Linda, you got me on a soapbox issue there. No, that's good, because Scott's I think the newest Rotarian in here probably hasn't learned about it yet. Hi, Scott. Hello. Sorry I was late today. <clears throat> All good. Yeah, yeah I've got to get better with the website. I just had an orientation. It's still a bit hot. Yeah, I just got an orientation this um, Monday morning after getting back from the no polio ride with Bob Mushler. Oh, awesome. How was that ride? Tell us about that. It was fun. We only had, I think, uh, about seven riders in it. But my riding partner was Catherine Copeland, who came down from the Vancouver, B.C. chapter, trailered her bike down, had all these detours in the I-5 because of the fires in California. And uh, she passed her motorcycle license test the day she left to ride the rally. Wow. <laughs> so brand new ride. And we thought, you yeah, know, I kind of figured, let me keep an eye on her, especially as an instructor. I kind of have a hard time hanging that hat up. But uh, we had a good day. We had a lot of checkpoints. She was on a Suzuki Savage 650. So not your typical iron butter rally kind of bike, but it right. worked fine. Well, that's good. And I understand they, uh, they overshot their budget on that. In other words, they earned more money than they were anticipating. Yeah. Yeah. Bob was really excited. I think he targeted 10 grand and they came in like 16.5 or something. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. So... What other questions are out there about the Rotary Foundation? I know for some, it's just this mysterical thing that's out there. Uh, RI, the RI learning site has got easier to access training on that too. Uh, and those wind up being fairly helpful. That's good to know. Thanks, John. 
I don't know, for me as a Rotarian, and, and I always tell this story in, um, in the employee, because I'm also the club trainer, and I tell the story when I'm training the new Rotarians, is that if I'm going to give money to a, an organization, I want to make sure that it's a donation that I know, that I trust, and uh, by all means, I want it to be an organization that I'm a part of because I want to take advantage of the matching opportunities that are out there. And, you know, the Rotary Foundation can provide you up to a three and a half times match when you're doing global grants. You know, where else can you take your money and get a three and a half times match to go out and do good in the world? That's something I'd heard some discussion about at our um, world community service uh, meeting, our committee meeting in Oakland number three. And they were talking about um, the Oakland Rotary Endowment Funds, ORE funds versus that, that, um, that rotary match and how, how they were going to leverage that. Oakland's a pretty big club, so they're talking about doing three projects. And so does the Oakland club have its own foundation as well? Well, they've got their endowment, a foundation. Yeah. That's not a word I'd heard for the Oakland one, but they've got, you know, they've got some some kind of funds that they can earmark per the three projects. Gotcha. Again, this is the first committee meeting I've gone to, and so there's a lot I have to learn about the way it runs. Understood. Well, here, Scott, I'll give you a little bit of information about the Rotary Foundation just to give you a, a primer on it. There are basically three buckets of money in the Rotary Foundation. We have our annual fund, which is our working fund that we do all of our projects with. Mm -hmm. We have our endowment fund, which is the uh, fund that we're using to grow the organization and to help pay for our peace fellows off of interest and commodities earned. And then we have the Polio Plus Fund where all the money goes for supporting Polio Plus. So those are the three basic buckets of money within the, um, annual fund and the endowment fund, there are also additional buckets of money that money can drop into. Um, but those are the three hierarchical buckets that the money goes into. So, and I encourage all new members uh, when they're signing up for Rotary Direct to please consider giving a portion, if not all of their money into the Rotary Share Fund, because that's the money that comes back into both the districts for district grants and also um, for global grants. So if they drop it into a specific bucket, then it can only be used exclusively for that bucket. Yeah, I've got a lot to learn about Club Runner and the website and all that other kind of stuff. And right now it's figuring out the people, you know, and, and the events and so on, and kind of going from there to the online. Yeah. Uh, don't, right. don't feel bad. I'm still learning stuff. And I've been doing this DRFC for three years and, um, it, it, Chris, have I ever told you about our uh, district governor's uh, grant incentive award? No. You, you, uh, and, and this may be get complicated. Traditionally, if you do a global grant, club makes a donation, district donate makes a donation, foundation matches. Simple one. Each district every year returns to the foundation unspent funds. And those can be used, they're held at Rotary or at TRF, and they can only be used for global grants. So it's possible for a club to do a global grant, make it look like a district grant, and then TRF matches the district one for one, so that uh, in essence, you increase the amount of money you can pull out of the foundation. And it gets more detail. I'll be happy to send you information on that. Yeah, and that, that's all in the way that you um, coin the grant and you, you're matching up the terms and conditions to make it all work. That's good stuff. I got to tell you, I think our Rotary Foundation is one of the, the – in terms of a unique selling proposition for what we offer as an organization compared to a lot of the other service organizations out there, I think our Rotary Foundation is, is truly the, uh, the cat's meow. It's what really grabs people um, and helps them better understand why Rotary is the leading service organization to be a part of. Charity Navigator has it at the top rating. Yep. 
perfect score for, I think, uh, I can't remember how many years in a row, but we've been four star for 10 years in a row or 11 years in a row now. Other questions or comments about the Rotary Foundation? <laughs> Mike, if you're on your, yeah, there you go, you're muted, that's good. Chris, uh, let me ask you a question about the points and point system. We donate a dollar, uh, we get a point, and I'm curious to know what uh, what you and the, the other folks here on this in this meeting do with your points, how your club uses points uh, to help the foundation and to some, some of the strategies that different ones of you use in your various clubs with the points and the point system. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate the question. And what I would encourage everybody to do is to go Google the Rotary Foundation um, points. I think it's called if you Google that. Um, and there's a two page FAQ that will answer a lot of this. But in terms of the way my club uses it, and when I was district governor and also district foundation chair, the way we used it, was we would encourage folks to give to the foundation and then we would match points that could go towards a Paul Harris fellow or a Paul Harris fellow plus one plus two, et cetera. So we, what we would do is periodically print off the um, foundation reports and see where people were getting close to their next Paul Harris fellow, their first or their next. And for those folks that were within $500, so in other words, they had, had contributed already at least $500 in dollars or points towards their next level of Paul Harris Fellow. Um, we would give them an opportunity to pay up to 50% of what they needed to get, and we would match the balance. So let's just say hypothetically, the club has 6,000 points in its bank account. Um, and everybody can print off a report and see where their club is in terms of points. Um, but let's just say that there's 6,000 points. So you have 10 people in the club, hypothetical numbers, but you may have 10 people in your club that are, are within that $500 delta. So, and let's just say it's $500 for the sake of ease of calculation. So we would go to those people and say, all right, you're $500 away from your first or next Paul Harris fellow. If you'll contribute $250 to us by this date, we'll match that with 250 points and you'll receive your next Paul Harris fellow. Um, other, and I've done that both at the club level and at the district level. Um, other clubs have Paul Harris giving tables. And so what they do is they work together as a group and that group makes a decision out of the table of 10, who's going to be the next Paul Harris fellow at the table, um, or the next Paul Harris fellow plus one. And they pull their individual points. Going back to your example, Ron, you put a dollar in, you got one point for each dollar given in, and they'll pull their points until they have the needed number of points to make one of the people at their table a Paul Harris Fellow. And this is the way I've seen a lot of clubs get to 100% Paul Harris Fellow clubs. So, but all of, all of this, um, all of these strategies only help your club better understand the Rotary Foundation because you're making it more aware, you're giving more information, and uh, you're getting people more inspired about the work that the Rotary Foundation does. Good question, Ron, thank you. You can also use those points to recognize uh, citizens in the community for their good work in any number of things. Yeah, in fact, uh, you could use those points, as you mentioned, John, for citizens awards. Uh, maybe you're giving away the uh, top teacher in your high school. Um, you may have a mayor that in your town that's not part of Rotary, but they ex exhibit the ideals of Paul Harris, and you want to make them a Paul Harris fellow, and that gives you great public image opportunities for your club um, because the media will come in if the mayor is there and you're going to present them with some special award, the media is going to take advantage of that and publish it and put information about it in there so the community learns more about Rotary through that. Absolutely. My other club was doing that. We do that every year at the auction. We give a, give a Paul Harris award to somebody in the community that's done a lot in the community. So they've been doing that for probably about five years now. Yeah.
So how many of you have a um, end polio known flag on your motorcycle? So on the old rotary, I'm sorry, yeah, on the old IFMR store, we had a, an end polio known flag. I don't think we've gotten around to putting any of the, the store materials back up on the new site yet, have we, Linda? No. Yeah. I've got the, the flag for taking the photos for the rally, but I've also got the sticker, the, the yellow sticker. And, you know, when Bob is talking to you and you're about to set up on the rally, it's kind of hard to say no to, I'm going to put this sticker someplace on my bike. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, personally, I'm not a big person about putting stickers on my motorcycle. I'll put a flag on it. <laughs> Yeah. I, I put a, uh, a magnetic one on my front bumper, but it's rotary emblem. You have a metal front bumper? Apparently, the sticker sticks. Oh, that's pretty special. <laughs> hey, that sounds name. Harley. <laughs> what did you say, Scott? <laughs> that sounds Harley Davidson. I borrowed oh, a friend's no. bike, and you know, the steel front fender. It's very alien feeling when you go through a little bit of gravel and you hear it pinging on the inside of the fender. It's like, is that metal? Why? <laughs> oh, I haven't seen my, I'll tell you guys a story. I haven't seen my motorcycle since the middle of July. Um, I went to the grocery store in the middle of July and one of the items I happened to buy was eggs and got home and I had the eggs in the right saddlebag got home, put the kickstand down, got off the bike, and went to open the saddlebag, and it wouldn't open. And I'm pushing and pulling and, you know, trying everything I can to get that saddlebag open, and it's just not opening. So I was faced with a choice. Take the bike into the shop, wait for them to get it open with smelly rotten eggs inside the saddlebag, or break the saddlebag open and get the eggs out. And uh, that's what I did. I broke the saddlebag open. So I learned on Goldwing, number one, don't put anything that is highly uh, covetable inside your saddlebags because anybody that wants to break into them can. I've demonstrated that. Um, and number two, when you take it into the shop, be prepared to leave it there for a while because I had some other work done. And that's not what's held it up. But they've ordered the saddlebag now three times from Honda. The first one came in the wrong color. The second one came in. It was damaged in shipment. So we're waiting on the third one to come in right now. So my garage has been void of my motorcycle since the middle of July. <laughs> I see a lot of head shaking. <laughs> Which bag was it? It was the right saddle bag. I only had that happen once and I was able to take it apart and get it open. Yeah, on the Honda, the, the cable lock system, the cable um, connecting piece inside the saddlebag apparently had gotten itself turned around. So no matter how hard I pulled on that cable, it was not opening. So, and there was no way to get the saddlebag apart. So they, they did secure it that much, but if you pull hard enough on plastic, it will break. <laughs> Didn't you know you're not supposed to put eggs in the right saddlebag. It can only go in the left saddlebag. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> Anyway, that got off the topic of the Rotary Foundation, but uh, interesting story. It sounds like something that should be in the owner's manual, huh? Where you put your groceries always on the left, not the right. Or, or in the trunk, yeah. Right. <clears throat> well, Linda, I didn't have a prepared presentation because you just told me two minutes before this meeting started that I was going to be talking about the foundation. So it's Jerry's fault. We'll blame it on Jerry. He's not here. <laughs> it's a flexibility check. It's a what check? Flexibility. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So um, this truck that we've been donating money for, did we do any kind of grant for that? Or was that strictly donations? Or do you know? I asked Jerry that question and he told me it was strictly donations. There was no grant involved. Cause you can get pretty good, um, pretty good matching on those grants. Mm -hmm. Now Jeff, you have to have a minimum though, right? Send it. Well, for a global grant, it's 30,000 us minimum, uh, for district grant, it's whatever your district has established as the rules. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And and those rules vary by district. That's good to know. Yep. Yep. So if you don't like the way that uh, the district this club is in is doing a grant, a district grant, talk to one of us to go back, the, uh, the associate members to go back to their district and see if we can't get a grant out of our own club to support an initiative that we want to do. <laughs> Chris, I think I know the answer to this, but in doing a global grant, does one of the clubs have to be from where the grant is taking place? Yes, because they're the boots on the ground, so they're responsible for all the monitoring, evaluation, and reporting. Um, and the critical component of that is if they're late on their report, of course, any future funding for that club gets shut down. And if they're really late on their reports, the whole district is at risk at loose. Both districts are at risk in continued funding. Uh, so yeah. We had that with our, just recently, one of our scholarship students turned in her report way late and our uh, district spending plan was not issued. Right. And you can do um, uh, reciprocal grants. If you do a project with somebody else and they can do a grant for you. We did that in my last club. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean, the Rotary Foundation is, is pretty flexible. You know, they're very strict on the terms and conditions, but they've even loosened up some of those. For example, uh, three years ago when I was a Rotary Foundation chair for the district, uh, we could not build structures whatsoever. You know, we now have the capability to uh, fund structures for certain criteria of building which I don't remember off the top of my head what that is, but um, you know, that's gotten loosened up for a little bit. You know, the only thing we used to be able to do is an upfit to a building, you know, a retrofit, but at least now we have some capability to build some structure. And that's a recent change offered by the trustees. They used to talk about the, uh the percentage uh, that's actually donated, uh, like 104% of your money is actually used. It is, is that percentage the same now? So when you're doing a global grant, the calculation that it's used is now 95%. They hold 5% aside for potential shortfall of monies that come in out of investments um, so we can no longer say it's 100% of our funds are used for every project that we do, at least from a, a global grant perspective. Um, however, if the investments have been kind to us, they will not charge back that extra 5%. So it really depends on how the investments are doing at the time. But they, they start off by holding out 5% as the contingency. Good questions. That's um, the donation every month builds up pretty quick. It really does. Yeah, I'm I'm coming up on five k now, and so it's it happens pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, my I can tell you, my first few years in Rotary, I did not understand the Rotary Foundation and what it was all about, and you know, I contributed ten dollars here, ten dollars there, et cetera. Um, but, but once I got fully educated on it, then it became I, I just became a lot more knowledgeable on on the work of the foundation, the benefits of the foundation. and uh, I just started contributing on a regular basis. And when they came up with Rotary Direct, I was one of the first people in the organization to sign up. I just thought that was great. because um, again, it just comes off my credit card, and I never miss it. You know, it just it's just a budget item that is there and it gets paid month after month after month. So. Some of the projects are, are pretty impressive. My, my last club, we did a, um, like a bus for mammograms in India and that was a matching grant. And um, then they came back and gave us a matching grant to start a free clinic mm -hmm. in the U.S. for homeless people. So it was a pretty good uh, arrangement. And on, on a different topic, but related, uh, when somebody explained the Bequest Society of the Rotary Foundation to me, uh, that was a no-brainer. 
you know, that I could take $10,000 of my life insurance and donate it to the Rotary Foundation upon my death, which means my kids would never see it, but they'd also never miss it and become a Bequest Society member and know that that money was going to do good in the world. That was a no brainer. You know, that, that's a, uh, uh, what do they call that? The estate world. It's a, a gift of the future, but, um, you know, it, it was really a no brainer for me. Chris, is there any e-learning on the Rotary website that explains how the foundation works also? There, there is. Once you've created your account on rotary.org mm -hmm. um, and you're in my Rotary, there's a whole band that goes across in the blue section. And in that blue band, let me get to it on my screen here real quick. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm not signed in. Um, in that blue band is a section called the Learning Center. And right. you go down to the Rotary Foundation, and there is a lot of learning material there. And it's all new. Uh, John, you were just saying you were looking at it, and it's all new. Is that right? Uh, they've made it easier to access and uh, more relevant, more fun to watch. Uh, it was pretty dry. And this is only in the last couple months. Okay. Yeah, in fact, the whole um, e-learning center for everything Rotary has significantly changed. And uh, a lot of the new learning tools that are up there are pretty good. I know that the ones on membership are dramatically improved. It should be a good example for me because um, my wife and I just a couple of years ago completed our master's in education specialty online teaching and learning. Mm. It's like everything's going that direction. It is. Absolutely. All right, here's how you earn your uh, something. Uh, go volunteer your services at RI. Uh, while the website is easier to navigate uh, more than it was a year ago, it's still fun. Well, and, and here's the rule. When you're looking for anything on the Rotary website, the first place you go is Google, not the Rotary website. <laughs> okay. So. I've had corporate experiences that are like that too. Yeah. The search engine on the Rotary website, while it's pretty good, it's just not as good as Google. So Google or Bing or your favorite search engine will get you where you want to go much more quickly than uh, you'll find it on the Rotary website. Well, there's a lot to pick up as a new kid, you know, I got club runner <clears throat> and then also the club website, which is different than club runner. And then the, the Rotary website to the international. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick, we talked earlier about Rotary Foundation points. I'm going to stick the link for the Q&A into our chat box here, uh, which is a PDF download. And that will tell you what you need to know about the Rotary Foundation uh, points. And my Rotary website is now up. And the third option over in the blue band is called Learning and Reference. And under Learn by Topic, there is fundraising projects, grants uh, that you'd want to learn about. If you go over to the Rotary Foundation, um, there's no learning there. But under learning and reference, there's also learn by role, you know, new member. So it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'd seen some of their lessons there. I haven't taken any yet, but when I went in there, I went in through the, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the main portal to find the club that I'm at right now, to find Oakland number three, but I knew I wanted to get into um, um, uh, the fellowship. So, mm -hmm. you know, was, which local club do I accompany it with? Linda, can I share my screen for just a second? Do I have that capability? Let me look. Uh, yeah, just go down there that, where it says share down at the bottom. No, it says host has disabled my participant screen sharing. I hate when that happens. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to do it. I'm going to make you the host. You'll have to make me the host back. I can do that. All right. It's all there yours. Go. Thank you. So what I'm going to share with you all, and tell me when you can see my screen. Just give me a thumbs up. You should be able to see it now. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So I was talking earlier about being able to go onto my rotary and see your own donation. So 
once you have clicked on to my rotary and logged in when you click on profile this screen right here will come up and your donor history report is right here on the right side and you just click on that and the cool thing about the donor history report is it will detail every transaction that's happened for you through the foundation so every gift that you have given every points transfer that you have made either on the way in or the way out um, if you donate to the foundation through your club you can see if your club has made the donation for you on your behalf so th this is a, a very good and useful report for you to use on a regular basis. I'm going to stop my share now. And Linda, I'm going to give you control back as soon as I figure out how to do that. Uh, let's see, how did I do that? Let's see. Make host. Here you go. You are the host once again. Hostess with the mostest. Um, okay. I have a question, Chris, on yep. um, setting up the My Rotary. Do you need your RI member number or anything you do. to do that? You do. Okay. And you can find that. Uh, where, where are you located, Jim? Wisconsin. I wa Wisconsin. Well, is this still under 6380? This club is, right? This club is under 6380. Yeah. Well, I was just asking. Does, does really well, you're, you're a full member of this club. Is that right? Or yeah. are you an associate member? No, I was a full member of WAPAC until the 1st of July okay. when we uh, started our charter, or 3rd of July, whatever it was. So I don't know Club Runner that well, um, but I know in the system that I use, which is DACDB, which is a competitor model to Club Runner. Um, you can see your rotary ID number in that system. I don't know if Club Runner gives you that ability or not. Um, but if you don't know it from that, if you look at your rotary magazine, your RI rotary ID is on the magazine. Oh, okay. I think Jerry actually texted it to me one time also. Okay. I'll find it. Yeah. So, so you need that to uh, set up your account and see. It's kind of nice. I, yeah, kind of uh, getting back into um, the, the workings. I, I was past president and very active in a previous club, but having moved and now gotten onto this club, it's it's kind of a totally new learning experiences, which is very interesting. The mm -hmm. whole e thing. Yeah, I, I can tell you this Rotary website has come a long way in the last couple of years from what it used to be. I was going to say, I, I didn't really enjoy working on it before because, like you said, it was so boring and hard to get through. It was. Looking forward to uh, getting time this winter to spend more time on that. Yeah, in fact, Rotary Club Central, um, they, with the increase in dues that the 2016 Council on Legislation approved, they were able to migrate to more state-of-the-art servers that are serving all of this information up uh, with the latest and greatest technology. And Rotary Club Central is significantly improved over what it used to be in terms of serving up the information. Chris, I've got a comment about multiple clubs. Sure. And also about what uh, Jim spoke about the money adding up. During my second year in Rotary, about 35 years ago, one of our members got up and he was uh, he was the local manager of a foundry. And he said, we had had a presentation on the Rotary Foundation. He said, I think this Rotary Foundation is a good idea. And I'm going to do one of those Paul Harris fellas. And I'm going to do one next year, too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were kind of like what you talked about. None of us in a new club knew, you know, what the Rotary Foundation was about. And I said, 
to myself, I said, if, if he can do it, I can do it. <laughs> but I wound up being, as you can see, the banners behind me here. I've been in eight different clubs. And at first, I didn't understand about your rotary ID number. And I would just, oh, no. <laughs> I'd go make up at another club until when I moved and until they invited me to join. And I wound up with, with my annual donations going in about four different directions. And I finally <laughs> had to get them to consolidate mm -hmm. all those, which was quite an ordeal. But after about 15 years, one of our, uh, I was in a, a club that had a past district governor that understood that stuff. And he informed me, uh, you're going to come to the district conference. You're now a major donor and we're going to recognize you as a major donor. There you go. Uh, you might also mention the Paul Harris Society. I assume that's available in all districts, isn't it? Well, it is. And, and Mike, it's interesting you mentioned the Paul Harris Society because it actually started down in your part of the world. And uh, it was a district project, which then grew into a zone-wide project and is now at a Rotary International level project. So a person can become a part of the Paul Harris Society if they agree uh, to contribute $1,000 per year to the Rotary Foundation. And that can be to um, anywhere in the Rotary Foundation. So it could be uh, into the annual share fund or it can be to a global grant. It could be to polio. Um, but as long as you've given a thousand, anywhere but the endowment fund, as long as you've given a thousand dollars a year, you're considered a Paul Harris Society member. You just have to sign the form that says that you agree to the best of your abilities to contribute that thousand dollars every year. I think I was probably a member of it before they did, before they came up with it. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, you know, in terms of return on investment and, uh, you know, just doing good in the world, the Rotary Foundation is just a great place to put your money. You don't have to worry. You know, how many of you get those um, telephone calls from the solicitors asking for donations? You know, I think we all do, right? And the very first question that I ask all of those people on the phone, even if it's a robocall, is how much of my donation gets to the end user? And you'll hear anything from... 50% to as high or as low as 15%. I think 15% is the lowest number I've ever heard, but none of them give 85, 90, 95%, 100% to the end user. The Rotary Foundation is guaranteeing that at least 95% of your money is going to get to the work in the field, to the project. And you, you just can't go wrong with that. You're a nice man, Chris. I don't give them that much time <laughs> to oh, engage I in conversation. I actually have fun with them because when they call me and they, they start trying to sell me something, I'll turn it around on them and I'll start selling them something. And before too long, they <laughs> hung up on me. So I, I don't have to ask them to take me off their list. They know not to call me anymore. <laughs> so. What do you try to sell them? Well, I, I start talking to them because I work for Rise Against Hunger. I start talking to them about how they, their group can package meals to end hunger in the world and what they can do to make a difference. And we, I just start down that path and they say, well, that's not why I'm calling you. I said, I know, but I have you on the phone and this is my mission. I need to talk to you about this. And uh, they finally just <laughs> say, I have to go or they click and hang up. So. <laughs> that's great. Well, it, you know, you don't get anywhere by either hanging up on the person on the other end because they're going to keep calling you back or, you know, yelling at them or getting frustrated with them because that doesn't do anybody any good. So I just decided to have fun with it. <laughs> so good man Linda we're down to eight minutes of the meeting yep, should I turn it back over to you uh, last minute <laughs> I, it, I'm talking about one of my favorite things Rotary Foundation Rotary Foundation membership while well, motorcycling uh, Rise Against Hunger it would be nice if we set a goal for all of our members to be E-R-E-Y Better yet, sustaining members, even better, Paul Harris Society members. 
Yeah, I think it would. Do we have a foundation chair in our club, Linda? I don't think we do. I'll have to look. Okay. Not I think we do. Isn't his name Chris Jones? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I just like to it's second that. Uh, uh, we should, I mean, I, I've never been in a club where we weren't 100% sustaining members. And so um, uh, I'm, you know, I, I mean, I'm going to give this year personally, but it, it feels to me like, you know, that if, if we, there's a way to encourage us to do that, I'm on board. Well, Paul, I, I, Paul just put a, a, a text here in the chat box. And I think you're spot on correct. We, we should all be signing up to give uh, to the Rotary Foundation through Rotary Direct. And if you do it at $10 a month, I almost promise you that none of you will feel it. Um, and you just do it. And that puts us at the sustaining level of $100 per year because $10 a month times 12 months is 120 bucks. So, yep, give up two Starbucks coffees a month. Absolutely. I gave them all up. Well, now, wait a minute. There's no reason to be extreme here. <laughs> yeah, that, that's okay. 120 US. That's 200 Canadian. Yeah, that's true, isn't it, Blair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul says two beers. <laughs> But really, um, you know, I, I would encourage every single one of you when we're done with the call tonight is to go to rotary.org, sign into your account, go to uh, hit the donate button and set up your credit card to be hit for $10 a month or $30 a quarter and just get it done. It's just not a big deal. We could be the first 100% club that's uh, Rotary Direct. How's that? Perfect. Does anybody else have any questions for Chris on the foundation? I have a question for Chris, but it's not on the foundation. When is it you're going to be in Greenwood again, Chris? Next Friday, assuming, um, oh, in Greenwood. Yeah, I'll be there next Thursday. I'm signed up, and I think Emilio is going to try to come down, too. Oh, good. Cool. Okay. There's some more questions. There's a board meeting after we've got three things on our agenda. Anybody's welcome to join us if you want. I'm going to stay, Linda. Can, can you say that again, Brian? It's going to be quick. I promise her I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> as long as you don't snore, we're okay. Okay. Does that stay right on this Zoom uh, on this line? Yes. Same line. I'm just okay. going to end the recording. Okay. October 10th will be our district governor visit. So put that on your calendar. And then um, we'll do our new member inductions as well that day. So if there's no other business, I'm going to end the recording and then we'll go on to a board meeting. Are we going to do the four-way test? Oh, yeah, we can do that. Are you going to do it? Oh, I did the meeting. Let somebody else do the four-way test. All right. Indy and John, I have all right. told you. Of the, thing, let's see, of the things we think, say, and do, first, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be better beneficial for all concerned? Rotary. And is it fun? <laughs> we got to work on the recitation of that. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thank you, Thanks Chris. For volunteering. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody. It was my pleasure to be here tonight and talk about the foundation. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. It was good, good job. Talk. Really good talk.